Hello everyone, JJIR here, and in this video we're going to see a little bit about how to have multiple Linux containers on a Chromebook. I just want to underline before we begin that this presupposes that you have enough hard drive space in your Chromebook to do all of this. Typically a Linux container, a very small one, will take between 1 and 2 gigabytes. I have a 256 gigabyte hard drive here so I can have multiple containers. So if you have a simple Chromebook, you're going to have to be very careful in how much space you're taking up to do this process. So essentially, what we have installed within the Chromebooks is something called LXC. And this allows us to control and configure Linux containers, essentially. And on this page, which I will put in the description under the video below, we have a whole list of things that we can use. Now, this may not be completely updated, but there is a way within LXC to find out what containers are available by doing a few commands, and we'll see that right now. So the first thing we need to do is to type Control-Alt-T to open up our classical Chromebook terminal, and then we're going to type VMC start to be able to get into our little area of LXC. So to start, we can be on any page or any tab. We don't have to be anywhere specific. We just click on, like I mentioned, Control-Alt-T, and that will open up our classical Chromebook terminal. Now this is small, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a little bit bigger right now by clicking on Control Plus, and that will make this quite a lot bigger so we can see what we're doing. And like we mentioned before, the next thing we're going to do is to type VMC Start Terminal. So we're going to grab this, and we're going to put it in here. Now to paste here, we click on Control Shift V, otherwise that won't work. And then we click on Enter, and that will bring us into Termina, which is this sub-element which allows us to see certain things. And one of those things is LXC. So after we do that, we can just click on LXC list to see what we have inside the Chromebook. So if we do Control Shift V and do that on LXC list and we click on Enter, we're going to get a fair amount of things here because I have all these installed. But usually the only thing you're going to have is the first one or the essential one because this presupposes that you already started up the Linux aspect of the Chromebook. Now I already saw that in another video and I'll connect that video here in the description and in the upper right after we're done. But essentially, if you go into settings, there's an area here that says Linux Beta, and you have to turn this on before you start doing any of this. So I'm presupposing that you've already done this step, you've turned on Linux, you've already started that up, and then all of this will be available to you. So making this a little bit smaller, we see that we have different types of Linux containers here. We have Debian, we have Ubuntu, we have Fedora, we have a whole bunch of stuff here floating around. So the only thing we want to do right now is just to see the few commands that we can use to get this up and running, and then we'll leave it like that and look at other things in future videos. So if we go back to our little sheet here, so the first thing we want to do is find images. So the, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to put in LXC image list images colon, and then the name of that Linux distribution. So if we grab this and control C, go back to our little area here, we're going to click on control shift V again. And here again, the idea is we're going to put in the type of Linux distribution or Linux container we want. So for example, I can do sent OS if I want and click on enter. And that will give me a list of images from sent OS. Or if I want Kali, or if I want Fedora, the same thing, I go here, delete this, put Fedora here, click on Enter, and that will also give me a list of images from Fedora. So it'll give you the, the most recent ones normally. Almost everything will give you the most recent, which is good. But the idea here is that after you've found one of the containers that you want, or the images in this case, then we can afterwards install that here in our list of containers that we have. So if we go back here, after we found the image that we really want, then down below we have the possibility of installing it. Now we install things here by doing LXC launch images colon again, and then the specific name of that image. So here, for example, the newest Fedora is 32, and you write it out like this, Fedora 32, and then the space here 
is to indicate to LXC the name of this. So one thing is to install the image. The other thing is to name that image so I have a way of accessing it later on. I usually put very small names here, but you can put any name you want. But it is good to put a name down. So it can be Fed, it can be Fedora, it can be whatever you want. You can be FFF if you want. But the idea here is to put something that indicates to you what this image is and maybe what it's even for. So you could put Fedora test or you could put Fedora whatever or Fedora server, et cetera. The idea here is to name it specifically so that you can access it in a very specific manner after you have it installed. So I usually use Ubuntu. I rarely use Fedora Scent or anything like that. But the idea here is that I can put the newest Ubuntu here, which is Ubuntu 20, and then I can name it. Now I have a tons of images, so I'm going to put six here, for example, and I'll grab that. All of this here, Control C, we'll go back to a terminal here, Control Shift V, and now what that will do is download if it hasn't been downloaded already. So if you already have an image of these here downloaded, it actually goes much faster. But if you don't, it will usually take between two and five minutes just to get the thing up and running. So after I have this set here, I'm going to click on enter and it'll say it's creating. And now it just says it's starting. It didn't have to download anything because I already had Ubuntu 20 downloaded. If you don't, like I said, it'll start downloading it. Usually all of these images are really small. So as you can see here, it actually tells you in certain ways how big this image is. So obviously it's gonna be something compressed, but it really doesn't take too much time to download. Given the fact we're not using anything graphical, it's actually pretty quick. So between, I'd say maybe one, two to five minutes, it'll download and then it'll say creating, it'll start downloading the stuff and then it'll say starting and you're ready to go. So now that we have it downloaded, you can actually check again to see if it's starting or stopped or whatever by using the LXC list again. And then again, that, what that's giving us is a list on the local hard drive of our Chromebook. And here, for example, we have UB6 running. So here, if it's not running, what we would do is click on LXC start and then put the name. In this case, it would be UB6. So I can start and stop by using these two here. So we have LXC stop. We'll get rid of that and put it up here. So that's a little more orderly. And then here we have LXC start and LXC stop would be UB6. I would suggest putting dash dash force here. That makes sure that there's no questions about whether you really want to do this or not. So typically, if I want to stop this, then I would grab this here and come over here and Control Shift V, enter, and what that will do is it will stop. So if I do LXC and list again, what that's going to say here is that UB6 is now stopped. So all of that is pretty much uh, clear in regards to what we've seen so far. Okay, so I'm going to start this guy back up again so we can jump into him. So we'll do Control C, Control Shift V. He'll be up and running now. I don't have to check because I know he's running. So now to jump into this container, all we need to do is put the name here and then bash. So we have execute bash here. So we'll grab this. And again, the only thing you have to change here is just the name of your uh, Linux image container. So we'll just grab this, paste that in there. And as you can see, now we're in root of the Linux container that we have is UB6 and we can do whatever we want. Now we can update this guy and install anything we want and do anything we want now with just having this here. And that's that's pretty cool, being able to do development on a Chromebook as long as I have enough space on the hard drive. And just another side note here, in future versions of Chrome OS, you will have the possibility of resizing the space that you have for each of these containers. So right now it's not feasible, but later on you could actually make this very minimal and just give it one gigabyte if you wanted to force it like that, or you could give it 10 gigabytes. So in the future that will be available. It hasn't there yet. I'll make a video on that when it actually becomes available to see how you do that process. But for now we are inside our container and we can do whatever we want. To get out of this container, all we have to do is click on exit and then we're done with that. And then finally, if I want to delete this, then all I have to do is go over here, put my name here of the lens container that I have, grab this guy, go over here, control shift V again, and that will delete this whether it's running or not. That's why the force is here. So I can either stop it and then delete it or just simply force the delete here if I really don't need this image anymore. So with that, I can go back to LXC and list, and I have the elements that I have here up till now.
The other very nice and cool thing here is that I can have my Linux container in a tab. So I can open up literally six Linux containers in six different tabs, and I can be working on all of these in different tabs. So in one tab, I can have my Fedora. In another tab, I can have my Sense. In another tab, I can have my Debian. another tab, Ubuntu. And I can have three Linux containers in three different tabs working at the same time. That's what makes this so awesome. It's so simple, so clean, and so easy to use so that we can have different things running at the same time. And as long as I have enough hard drive space and as long as I have enough CPU power, I can do different things, especially if they're simpler ones. So I can actually have in one tab, one container programming the things, and another tab actually running something, another tab having a server, another tab having a VPN, et cetera, et cetera, working all at the same time here on the Chromebook as long as I have enough space and power. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. If there's anything else you guys need, please let me know as well right there. Otherwise, I hope this video helped. Please click on the like and subscribe if it did help you. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one and take care.